Time for year two of our over-unders with Will Fur looking at a bunch of Pacers topics. Benedict Matherin's playing time, Jarris Walker's games played, will Pascal Siakam be an all-star, and the classic, how many games will the Pacers win? It's all coming today on the Locked On Pacers podcast. You are Locked On Pacers, your daily Indiana Pacers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, y'all? Happy Thursday, and welcome into another edition of the Locked On Pacers podcast, where we, of course, talk about the Indiana Pacers, as always. My name's Tony East. I cover the team for Forbes and SI, and today I'm in Gamer's Fieldhouse, as you can see, hopefully not here, but just see, and we are doing our yearly over-unders with Will for last year. I made these all up. I made up the over-unders besides the win totals, and they were very good lines, and they were great for discussion, and we were both right on with a lot of stuff, and I hope that this year my fake lines are just as good. We do the Vegas win total, of course, and then we dive into all sorts of stuff. Benedict Matherin and Jairus Walker's playing time. Will Pascal Siakam be an all-star? Where will the Pacers rank on offense and defense? James Wiseman, all sorts of good stuff today. Will is the best at this. He crushed it last year, as we'll get into for the first 10 minutes today. So let's just jump right in doing some over-unders with Will Furr. Year two of over-unders with Will Furr. Last year, our, our over-under lines that we set out of thin air turned out to be very good lines, Will. Vegas should be calling us to set up this year. We will, of course, review those before going through new ones for this year, starting with the win total one that's set by Vegas, and then doing ones that I make up, where I make Will answer some toughies on the spot. Will, do you recall last year at this time talking about a uh, possibly rebuilding, maybe 500, maybe Jairus Walker to play Pacers team? It's just crazy how many predictions looking back end up being wrong because of how much better they ended up being than, than even we both thought. Yeah, and I would like to blame it on the Siakam trade. That's what I'm going to do. But they were far better than I expected before the Siakam trade. So I can only go so far. We both said well over on the 37 and a half line from last year, but neither of us got even close to 47 in our prediction. So uh, how much of a pat on the back are we really allowed to give ourselves? Are, are we, hey, uh, we, we were on the correct side. We were well on the correct side. In fact, I, I want to start these the way I have looking back at last year because holding myself accountable is important and holding you, Will, accountable is even more important by going back and looking at what we said last year because we first looked at the Vegas over under 37 and a half and both were like, over. And then we said, well, what if it was higher? Because we both said, eh, they're probably going to be 500. What if it's 40 and a half? And we both said over to that too. <laughs> so this was pretty easy. Good job, Will Fur. It was. Let's just did, stop I, there. We were perfect. <laughs> Our predictions well, were funny. listening back to our discussion because they won 37 games two years ago and then added Bruce Brown to a young team. How was that team going to win the same number of games? We said that then and it was so obvious. And then the season happened. It's like, duh. Like, how was that the line? It made no sense. We should have bet it. We well, should have. I should have. I can't speak for you. So <laughs> here's a stat that we talked about that I, can't, I should be reciting more now. That year when they won 37, they were 26 and 22 when both Halburn and Turner played. Like... <laughs> How, it should have been so obvious last year's team was going to be better than I mean, all the signs were there. I was too timid. I put them. <laughs> should have said 50. Go, go big. <laughs> well, this year we will get to it, and uh, the line is is more interesting this year, but I still think it's kind of similar to last year. All right, here's the here's where it got interesting. They got Obi Toppin. You thought he was going to start. My prediction last year was that Jairus was going to start. Doesn't matter. Irrelevant to the discussion. Our first over-under we talked about was Obi Toppin over-under. 11.5 points per game. What do you think you said, Will? I said over. You did say. You said comfortably over. I said under barely. But here's the thing. You were right in a way because your take was starting next to Tyrese Halliburton is going to get him easy shots around the rim. And if he improves at all as a shooter, he's going to clear that easily. Well, guess what, Will? For as a starter, Obi Toppin averaged 11.9 points per game. So I will give you a pass. Because no one could have seen the Siakam trade sending him to the bench, although I guess kind of Jalen Smith sent him to the bench. But um, his shot attempts and roles certainly changed a lot at that point. But you were on it. You were actually more on it than history will say. Uh, but that you one was fascinating. Last year, right? A new player in a new system. And we were both – I said under, but I'm not going to get credit for being right because they traded for Siakam and started Jalen Smith at his place. It's, I wasn't right on purpose. I just stumbled into it. What did you make of of his role change? Like, do you feel like he's in the right spot now? Was that all? Did they make the right choices? I think they did. Yeah, yeah. He should he should not be a starter in the <laughs> league unless he is like the fifth 
unless he's surrounded by four defenders. If he's your one bad defender, then sure, toss him out there, whatever. Uh, but he can't start for the Pacers team that can't defend even when he's not on the floor. <laughs> well, it kind of changed everything when he could shoot because then he could fit with not just Tyrese Halliburton. He could fit in any lineup. And so then Ben Jenkins was like, yeah, this is fine. He can play with he can play with TJ McConnell and Ben Mather. And that group will work. I don't know how, but it worked. So yeah. that changed everything, but it also reduced his minutes. And that was before they traded for Siakam. So a lot of dynamic changes there, but I will give you credit. When he started, he was over that. Here's one that was very... You, you were all over this one. This was a perfect prediction for you. So a big thing I talked about a lot last summer for the Pacers getting better was Tyrese Halburn upping his shots, his shot attempts, because he's such an efficient self-creator that, oh, the Pacers offense can be better if you just take 17, 18 shots a game, right? So I said, over, under, Tyrese Halburn, 20 and a half points. And Will, your exact response was, under, and it will drive us nuts. <laughs> and boy... Were you on that? Because his shot attempts per game didn't really go up, although obviously that stretcher he was playing 20 minutes a game is a huge factor in his per game stats. Uh, he was over that before 65. that. <laughs> Got to get the 65. So he also has talked about how he feels like sometimes it's selfish when he's passing a lot because he knows it's actually hurting the offense. I took the over. That was wrong. I think if he was healthy all season, it would have been much closer because he was well over that before he got hurt. But when yep. he came back, Siakam was playing. He had someone worth deferring to. So on one hand, I think we both were on the right line of thought, and this stupid 20 minutes per game stretch really screwed us up. On the other hand, again, like with Toppin, the shifting dynamics of their season, both in terms of success and the big trade, made it kind of hard to get that one right. But you were all – you nailed it down to the word. Bravo. If if he's healthy, you, you win that one. I did not expect him to come out and be first team all NBA for a couple of months. <laughs> People were like, is he in the MVP conversation? I said, no, but the fact that you're asking says everything about it. Yeah, it oh, well, makes well. me feel nice and warm inside. <laughs> All right. Oh, this Well, I got this one right by one stat. Not one per game, one total stat. Be Benedict Matherin, over under two assists per game was the line we set because we that was a big thing with him starting. Can he move the ball and fit in with those groups? And if he does... How much one does how much does that matter? And two, can he just pass enough? Right? Can he just defer just enough that you can tell he's making better decisions? He had 119 assists in 59 games. So <laughs> one over, one assist over two per game. Uh, you said under, and I honestly can't even say that either of us were right or wrong because it was one assist. You you were but again, I'm giving Will for credit for a right answer because the thought when we were talking. And into the season was that he was going to start, and he did. And what you said was, when he's starting with better scores, it makes more sense for him to defer and pass and find those alleys. And guess what? Ben Matherin as a starter was at 2.9 assists per game. So similar to Toppin, the early perception of the season, you were right about that thinking. But as they changed things and as his role kind of settled in more of the Ben Matherin and E stuff, that really changed. So, uh, again, kudos to you for being wrong yet still right and looking smarter than me. I'll I'll take it. <laughs> what did you think of his progression that way? Because there were some games where it was so clear that he was making progress as a team player and some games where even when he was good as the Ben Matherin kind of stuff, it wasn't as jelly. What did you think of it? It it obviously it would have been nice to see a full season. Yes. Uh, the shoulder injury was a bummer. Would have loved to see him in the playoffs. I I think he's he's got that dog in him. You put him in the playoffs. I think that's where he shines. But I, I'm getting I, I hate using the word flashes, and that's what it's been. It's rookie season. It was flashes of this and flashes of that. Last year, there were flashes of passing, and he has these little tantalizing moments. He'll make, uh, I think he made a hook, a left-handed hook pass off a drive in one game. That I was like, I, I've never seen him that, throw a left-handed pass at all. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's there. Like sometimes when he sees the defender, it, it happens. You remember you said, "Is this gonna be a star, or could this go down a Jamal Crawford path?" Well, that I didn't even put in my notes, but I remember it. I said over, but my reasoning was mostly just like inertia of everybody saying he needs to pass more. And I said two point one assists per game. I was very close. Sadly, we both got this one right. Uh, we talked about their defensive rating being over underrated twenty point fifth. <laughs> we both said over, and it was twenty fourth. That was a layup. Even after adding Bruce Brown, it was like they just didn't – they don't have – Even that. after adding Siakam. I, <laughs> hey, they. I actually wonder what they finished after that. It was probably pretty close to 20. It's pretty easy to check. 
But I mean, it was just, it was so interesting because they clearly tried to address it with Bruce Brown in some ways, but that just not enough. There was just that maybe we should have indexed that more. When we were talking about Nemhard, which we'll get to in just a second, but that was the easiest one for us, which says a lot about, <laughs> about their team and is a, and also a little, can they be better this year? We'll get to that in a second, but right now, what do you think? Can they be better this year? I, I do think they'll be better. Um, I think a full year of Siakam, you know, he's talked about uh, how he was in shape in Toronto and then he came to Indiana and realized he wasn't in shape to play the way Carlisle wanted to play. Uh, I I think naturally if he can get into that kind of shape, it's going to help the defense if he can keep up with the frenetic pace um, yes. and just a, a, a training camp together. Like you're used to Nick Nurse's radical defensive schemes and box and one and all the weird stuff he does and then you come to carlisle who has a we'll say smaller set of base defenses in some ways that's good uh post yakum trade will what is your official guess for their defensive rating rank 26th 22nd okay. still over still worse <laughs> so better uh, the problem is that also includes games where like, like Utah's defensive rating and that stretch is like three points worse than anyone else's. Cause they stopped trying. So a little bit of a little bit of nonsense in there. The other thing you said in there that I put a green in for, cause you got it right. Even though it wasn't related to the question was you said, you think buddy gets moved this year. Bravo. Our last one was one you came up with Andrew Nemhard starts. I said before we recorded, I bet the line would be 50. You said it should be 30. We were talking a lot about Ben Mather. We were talking a lot about trades. Talk about how much he started in the first season. And we both said under 40 starts. Oops, we were wrong. Andrew Nemhard, uh, well-deserved starter. Uh, the quote was, I think it would take a shockingly bad Matherin season or they decide his outcome is Jamal Crawford. Well, neither of those happened. And yet, Andrew Nemhard earned and will continue to earn the starting two spot. That over-under wasn't too bad. He started 47 last no, year. No, it was pretty close, actually. My 50 was too high. That was a reasonable compromise we came to. We were just both wrong. <laughs> it just, they just needed defense at the spot, right? Like every time they made a move or changed the lineup, I was like, Nemhard should be in there. And it's not even necessarily about raw talent, although I'm obviously stupid high on him, but they just need the defense so bad in that spot. That's why every time they would turn back, they're like, all right, Neesmith, Nemhard starting. That makes the most sense. That was what we did last year, Will. We both did very well, except for that Nemhard one. So we will avoid Andrew Nemhard this year, which means we'll both obviously get every single one right. Hey, everybody, let's take a short little break so we can talk about the lovely folks over at FanDuel. You've heard us talk a ton about FanDuel, America's number one sports book right here on this podcast. Well, they've got something a little different for you now because right now, through September 22nd, every single FanDuel customer can bet $5. You'll get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. How about that? Watch the Colts. Watch whoever. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon at a market game. All you need is a Google account, current form of payment. And you can cancel any time. Three weeks free trial of NFL Sunday ticket. How about that? But you got to do that $5 bet on FanDuel. So just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sportsbook. FanDuel, check them out today. The first one we did last year is the first one we'll do this year. We'll use Vegas for this, and then the rest I set. The over-under in Vegas at some sportsbooks is 46.5. Our lovely FanDuel partners here say it's 47.5, so we'll do that. 47.5 wins for the Pacers. Well, over or under for you? I'm going to go under, and it hurts. Oh, wow. Wow. What makes you say that? I think, <clears throat> excuse me, the East got better. Uh, I think the Knicks are going to be, uh, I'm terrified of that team this year. I think they're going to be on a tear. Bridges makes them better. I think the Sixers getting Paul George makes them better. Uh, I don't expect Miami to be listless Jimmy Butler's in a contract year I have to think he's uh, gonna play more than whatever 40 something games uh, even if he does have nagging injuries I don't think they're gonna fall to the play in I don't think it's gonna be anything precipitous and terrible but I think that all of the bottom of the East, unless you live in Detroit or Washington, <laughs> is going to have a, a more fun year. Yeah, the I guess the question in the East is like, does Chicago and Brooklyn getting worse offset how much everybody got better? 
And I'd probably say no. I don't because a lot of teams got better and only a few teams got worse. So certainly being top eight is significantly easier, but that actual grouping from eight to two, three, four, wherever you tear it off is harder to get those wins. And the Pacers got a lot of those last year and they will be more difficult to get. And I still wonder if they're a similar style of team with this crazy high octane offense, if they just have inconsistent results because of that, like for a while, a while in this era until they can guard a little better. When I ran through the schedule, I got 48 and that was, before the scheduled in-season tournament game. So I have to go with the over because that's what I think. Last year, it was so obvious to me it'd be an over. This year, it's not as obvious for the reasons you just laid out. But it's just 41 more games of Siakam. And it's inconceivable to me that none of their lesser experienced guys get better. Like, could it be Could be? It be very few of them? Yeah, certainly. But it, the odds it's none is stunningly low. So someone significant, because they play a lot of young guys, is going to be better. And they have 41 more games plus a training camp with Siakam. Maybe they get worse injury luck because Halliburton was the only significant one last year. But I think it's going to be slightly over. I would have gone over on both 47 or 46 and a half. But you you're, do raise two points. It's going to be close. You're swaying me here because that yes. all makes sense. You, yeah. you have to expect the, what, 80% of the rotation is going to get better. The only two that you think might um, get worse would be TJ and potentially Siakam, but God, I hope not. It's the first year of that deal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. They're the only they're two the that only are 30 or older in the whole rotation. Yeah. Everybody should get... I'm going to go over. Let's let's yes, do it. I got you convinced. Let's it, be brave. It, you are right, though. Like That is what the discussion is. Did they get better enough to offset how much harder it will be to get wins this year, right? Because especially in the East, where they play majority of their games... And everybody keeps saying this in my comments. They keep they keep saying, well, if they just clean up those, you know, they lost to every bad team in the league last year, right? Like, if they go 500 in those games, oh, they, they're better. Yeah, I agree. But they also swept OKC and swept Dallas and beat Boston twice. Like, if you're going to say one result gets better, you have to also say that their top-end results get worse. So I don't know how much that will offset. But I I went when I went through the schedule, I got one more win than that line. And that's why it's a good line, because it's close. So yep. I, will, I will unconfidently, but I will take the over. All right. You and Adam always knock those out of the park. Uh, he does. <laughs> I do not. It's a good <laughs> episode every, every year. year. It's crazy. Okay, number two. Uh, this number is not arbitrary. You might have thought so, but it's not. It's Jarris Walker games played. One of the probably biggest storylines for the team this season, albeit not necessarily in terms of their wins and losses, but certainly significant for their future. Last year, he played 33 games. I have this line set at 51 and a half. Well, that is because he played 18 games for the Mad Ants, meaning he played 51 in total. But this okay. is specifically just the Indiana Pacers. Does Jarris Walker play more or less than 51 and a half games this season? I'm going to take the over. I am leaning that way, but I would like you to give me your reasoning. I think that, it, well, I don't want to ruin a future one, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, I think I know what you were going to say. Given about you... Some of their additions, we'll say, <laughs> uh, for the off season. And I think it, it I, Isaiah Jackson's nice, but I think we're going to see a little bit of Obi at the five with backups. And that opens up spot for Jarris at the four with backups. Uh, we've seen Rick is willing to play him at the three as well. And it, it's your two. It's time to start giving him some time Something. and figure out what you've got. Yeah. Because uh, they just, he, he averaged three points a game last year. They didn't give him real minutes except maybe in five games. Uh, I, I think Rick's just going to want to see what he's got in this like hyper defensive minded guy and we'll see if Jarris can maintain uh the defensive intensity and avoid the mistakes that you know, apparently kind of sank him last year some of the gambling that he was doing that uh led to Rick burying him on the bench but I, I think it's going to be over they have two three maybe even four guys that they're like we got to figure out what this guy is which is very rare for a team as good as them which is kind of an interesting sort of conflicting goal to me this season. Here's why I am going to take the over. Um, last year, my, my take's always been the same. Last year when the season started, right, they had Jordan Wara and Buddy Heald and Bruce Brown, and they got Doug McDermott, and I'm missing one other guy who was just off the back of the rotation. But either way, they had a lot of guys who if there was an injury, that guy would play. Oh, McConnell's out of the rotation, duh. 
So mm-hmm. like they had a lot of guys early in the season where it was like, if there's an injury, that guy can play, or this guy can play, or this guy. And even Ben Shepard was out of the rotation and he got some spot minutes in there, right? And so all those guys are gone, right? Bruce Brown's gone, McDermott's gone, Jordan War is gone, McConnell's firmly in the rotation, right? So now if to me, if there's an injury at any any position, Jarris is the first guy who is the recipient of minutes, right? Point guard gets hurt, Nemhard moves down, in comes Jarris. Any two gets hurt, Shepard moves down, in comes Jarris. Any three gets hurt, easy. Any four gets hurt, easy. Any and a five, you described it. Top and up, in comes Jarris. Maybe they go to Wiseman there because why else would you sign James Wiseman? But that's the only one that I'm like, meh. All the rest, like there's just so many more pads to minutes. And like Halbert missed 17 last year. Miles Turner missed five. Uh, I could easily get to 51, summing up all the games everybody missed. Neesmith missed some, Nemhard missed some. Basically, everybody missed a couple. So I will take the over, but I think a lot of them, like the like 33 he had last year, like 25 of those are garbage time, right? Like probably the same number of garbage time yeah. game. But I think he'll have serious minutes more often because there's no one between him and the rotation now. And then it's possible because he'll be getting more chances to then take a spot of a Ben Shepard, uh, whoever he would be out playing if he played a lot. So I'm taking the over as well, but I'm not going to take it by a lot because they still are – pretty deep and they still have like the James Wiseman option if they need it at back of five or whatever that that may look like to them I'm I, I'm gonna go 60 that's Ooh, okay a firm number I should have done that I'll go oh I could price is right you I won't though uh, <laughs> I, I'll say I'll say that that's accurate ish I'll say around 60 also just so there's no you no can difference. say 59 it's fine <laughs> I was gonna say 61 actually oh so you're there we go okay then I'll take 61 uh, okay, this one's for funsies because I think this is possible. Pascal Siakam, over under half an all star appearance. <laughs> this is a very obvious what I'm asking question, but I made it an over under. Uh, I'm going over. <laughs> okay, okay. I think he's going to have a very good uh, offensive year next to Halliburton. Agreed. Full off season with him. Uh, had a nice run in the playoffs, obviously. I think they're going to figure out how to play as long as whatever myster- mysterious leg injury Ty had at with Team USA isn't a concern. Um, I, I think I think Siakam will get it. So those are all totally accurate reasons. Um, I think that last year he was good, but the Raptors were not good enough for him to get enough consideration. Because people always do this crap like, oh, they're so good. They should get two. I'm like, your record shouldn't matter that much. I just care how good you're playing. But he will get more eyeballs because they're on national TV more, because he's on the Pacers. Like his shooting percentage went up over two and a half percent with the Pacers. His three point percentage went up a bunch. His rebounding went up a bunch. Like he was more effective and the team was better. So I wonder what that looks like if they're top six, top seven, top eight, whatever, what that looks like in terms of the attention he would get and his stats. Uh, and then last year, it, it's tight. So if you look at front court players in the East, which is apparently impossible on basketball reference, there it is. Um, he finished, I can't even count. Okay, he finished 10th, it looks like. Giannis, Embiid, Tatum, Paolo, Jalen Brown, Bam, Porzingis, Jimmy, Randall, Mikael Bridges, Scotty, and Siakam. So could he catch that back group there? Could he catch Scotty Barnes, Mikael Bridges, Julius Randall, contract your butler, Porzingis is out for the year. And can he do that while holding off the Franz Wagner's Jaime Hawkes of the world? I think that's possible, totally, right? Bam made it. He was the last guy in. Um, so I think it's definitely possible, but... It's a good group. <laughs> I don't know if yep. anyone's falling out of that group. So I'm going to well, take what I would say that it's quite possible that the two Knicks cannibalize votes. Oh, that's a good point. That they I cannibalize I, I forgot that Mikael Bridges and Randall are on the same team when I just read through those names. That's a good point. People do take votes from each other. That's definitely a thing that happens. I'm take it's so close. I'm probably taking the under, but he'll be like. I'm saying under because he'll be like 13th or 14th in a field of 12. Like he, yeah. if we come back and he makes it as injury replacement, I'm going to be really mad <laughs> that you beat me on this. But I think it's p- totally possible, right? And that's the type of player that they wanted to get. And he was certainly at that level for them in the playoffs. So that one will be tricky. Back to young guys. The big source of intrigue for the Pacers path beyond this season. Benedict Matherin. Another Ben Matherin one. We did one with him last year. We'll do another one this year, although a little bit of a different tenor this time around. Minutes per game. Last year, Ben Matherin finished at 
3.1. He also started a lot. He could play at the three and the two this year. They got more mouths to feed. Andrew Nemhard might start to start the season. Aaron Neesmith is probably going to start start the season. Should Ben Shepard play the backup three? Can they actually get enough minutes for Ben Matherin? He's the hardest guy to really figure it out for when you build the rotation. It's not hard to get him what he needs, but who do you take it from? So I'll just use half the game since I, I'm projecting right now he'll come off the bench. Benedict, Ma I guess by default we need to use a decimal. Benedict Matherin over under 24.001 points per game. I'm saying over with a bullet. Oh, it's either I love going that. to be over or he will not be a pacer by the trade deadline. <laughs> Whoa, dead wow. Line. Wow. Okay. I so don't that, think they'll keep him to to make him an eighth man who plays 20, 20 minutes, minutes a game guy. Because that's yeah. only going to tank his value from there. If they feel like they can't get 24 minutes a game out of Matherin with this team, I think they'll move him. So here's a question. To get him more minutes, would you be willing to just not play Ben Shepard at all? Like I, none. In a heartbeat. I think you yeah, I think the answer has to be yes. Because if they play Neesmith Nemhard 32. There's only 32 other minutes available for backup two, three. And if Ben Shepard plays 10 minutes, that's 22 for Matherin, right? So in my head, it's like, okay, the answer would be more Matherin than Shepard in that case. But do you really want to not play Ben Shepard at all? Like that also seems very not like a linear progression path, but that is how the cookie crumbles sometimes. So I think they might have to make that, that hard decision. And then that could go back to bite us in the butt about our Jarris answer because if Ben Shepard's out of rotation, he would be the guy who plays if there's injuries and stuff. But I think, I think they need the answer to this to be over, which is why I will take the over too, but it's not as easy as it sounds just because they're like, if, if, here's the thing though. If he comes in this season, uh, take away the offensive part where like all the questions are about fit, not his ability. If he comes in the season and defends his butt off, this will be the easiest over ever. Right. Because right. then he, cause he can play so much with Halliburton or whoever, and good because just because he can guard, right? So I think this has to be over. Like the Pacers need it to be over. But I agree with you that if it's not, then then we'll be starting some no fun conversations. So how many how many years on how, how many locked on Pacers podcasts do you think you said this is when the Pacers need to figure out <laughs> the Miles Turner Domas Sabonis pairing? <laughs> oh gosh, like five years of them. So. <laughs> At least a hundred. I mean, triple digits for sure. Well, the the, the thing that made that funny is like that there were the mixed in parts of like, well, if they're not going to figure that out, they got to trade Goga, and they didn't do that either. So <laughs> it's tough to say. That's a good point, though. <laughs> that did last a long time. But the problem is this time they have finances working against them too, and they did not have that as as much with Turbonus. Like they have a very obvious deadline of like, all right, <laughs> you figured out by this time. We figured out, or he figures it out by this time. But it's just, it's yep. just so the fun weird. max is still a max. That's still fun a lot of money. And he is not worth that right now. He is absolutely not worth that right now. But I bet but if you I, ask him and his agent. <laughs> and there are, but the thing is for him, like there are Washingtons and San Antonio's and Brooklyn's out there who are young teams that need guards, right? Like there are, op there are options right now. So they're easy. What? Him and San Antonio. Oh. That, that'd I'm sick. loving that. That'd be sick for him. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That'd be so cool. Um, So this is a big year, just like last year was, but he got hurt and played a lot of different roles and showed some flashes. This is a big year for him. Uh, I was very high on him going into last year. I still am high on him, but I'm higher on the fit of Nemhard and Neesmith to start right now, which is why this is a discussion. I will also take the over, but not as confidently as you, just given the many factors at play. Same one we did last year, baby. Defensive rating, rank over under. We just said this. This actually, I'm glad I looked this up while we were talking. With Siakam, they were 22nd, but that was during the tanktastic part of the year. Last year's number was 20.5. I don't think they can get 20.5. <laughs> they didn't add anybody. Um, so I changed the number this year to 22.5. I think I sent you 23.5. Well, I'm changing it to 22.5 as I'm talking. Okay. 22.5 for the Pacers defensive rating. I think the Pacers will be a top 22 defense. All right. Look at you. Going out on a limb. I think this is your 22. first under of the day. Okay. Why do you think that? So, so actually, I, I have my argument for, but I would like you to, to do it. Yours. It, as much as uh, I had my concerns about the Siakam trade and the inevitable contract he got, and I don't think he was super awesome on defense for the Pacers last year. He was not I super think, awesome, I agree. I think it's going to be better. I think he will be better. 
an off season in the system, like I said, conditioning, uh, the other guys knowing how to move and how to function with him, I think is a big deal. I think there was a, a lot of points that came with guys spinning in circles, looking at each other, like you, me, was that? <laughs> yeah. And the, this team has a lot of continuity. Um, I, I think that's going to matter. I think the, the improvement of young players, you know, defense is incredibly difficult for young players the nba moves at a whole different speed i think we'll see improvement from pretty much all of them there uh, maybe excepting obi toppin i'm, I'm not crossing He's fingers not young for anymore. that i call him inexperienced not young that's fair that's fair so i i think they will make a moderate step forward i, I won't call them top 20 but I agree with you that Siakam was underwhelming on defense. Like I allotted him when they traded for him. Like, yeah, this guy's a pretty good defender in Toronto. The defensive impact he had was not him. It was that Aaron Neesmith was not guarding 6'10 guys anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like I always cite the same game, but everybody was like, oh, this is horrible. And they had to put Nemhard on Larry Market, and it was their best option by far. They got smoked. Right. And like, Nemhard on Giannis. Yes, yes. Matherin was their best Giannis stopper, like reasonably for a while. So the size part, not because of his size, but because it allows other guys to guard better positions. I think that is what propelled them forward the most on the defensive end. That still only got them to 22nd. And with teams trying, I think 22nd or 23rd is going to be what it is. I think they're going to be slightly worse 22nd and a half. I think they're going to be 23rd. I'm taking the over. My first, I guess, negative over. This time I said under on the Siakam All-Stars. But it's just that that's their thing, right? That's their next step. We'll get to the offense in a second. But I just I don't think they're quite there yet. Okay, the other new guy, the only new guy who could actually play significant times uh, is James Wiseman. I currently think he's going to be the third center. I don't know where you stand on that, but this question will tell me what you think about that. Over under 41 games where James Wiseman is in the rotation, not playing at all, but in the rotation, backup five or whatever role he has at the time. I don't think James Wiseman will see the court 41 times for the Pacers, let alone be in the, <laughs> in the rotation. rotation. Wow. Yeah, um, I'd probably take the under on this. The only this would be an injury thing more than anything, right? I'm asking this more because I'm yep. curious. Because like, is it? There's no route to you, or I don't know. I just Isaiah Jackson fits their system and is better, right? And there's a reason that he only got five hundred thousand guaranteed. Even though when I did a deep dive on Wiseman, I walked away like this actually could be better than I thought, especially in the Pacers system. I still think he'll be the third center, and most of his rotation minutes would come when there's injuries, not when. Not, not like, oh, Isaiah's right. been terrible. <laughs> we have to change this. So I would take and, the end on that. And last year, like, Miles was incredibly healthy last year. In Very rare. I'm, I'm completely leaving that out. So I should reconsider because if Miles misses 20 games, give or take, that's probably 20 games where Wiseman at least gets five or ten minutes. Yeah. Even if they're playing Obi at the backup five some. You probably get Wiseman out there for size five or 10 minutes. Maybe they give him, you know, a 10 or 15 game look at some point. You know, maybe, maybe Isaiah Jackson's just the third center at some point because Rick <laughs> apparently likes doing that. Last year, third big man, Isaiah Jackson. How many games do you think he had where he played 10 or more minutes? This is going to make this line look really good. Not even do this on purpose. How many games do you think he had? 10 or where more he minutes. played 10 or more minutes? Yep. 20, 25, 30. 39. Wow. So that includes injuries to sticks or miles plus when he earned it. Cause he played well throughout the year in a career year. So that's close to 41, right? So those that and in centers do have the most injuries. So I think it's possible. I like, you think it will be under, especially the rotation part. I think his appearances will be like, like Jackson's last year, like 59 ish last one. This will define the Pacer season to me. If this number stays where it was last year, they'll be just fine. They'll be great. Over under three, I guess three is not allowed. Over under 3.5 ranked offense in the league. Under. I think they're going to be number one or two. Let's go. I love it. Yeah, like we can talk about the defense. We can talk about who plays and who doesn't. That's all great. If they have the top five offense again, <laughs> they're going to be just as good, right? Like it's just, it's just how it is. Halliburton was on a minutes restriction. <laughs> and then for quite a while, he was an absolute shell of himself. They still were second. Yeah. And yeah. They, they still, 
you said second. I thought they were number one last year. The Celtics passed them by the end of the year. Ah, basketball reference lied to me. Oh, basketball I was reference off the rating per game. First. Yeah, but they were two points ahead of third. Like, well, you know, it's it's crazy. And if they're that good on offense again, I don't care how they defend. They're going to win over half their games, like pretty comfortably. Yep. Yeah. So I think they'll be top two. Can I pitch you the? Here's the argument against it. It's not fun. No one wants to hear this. All right. Two. Let me let me talk about a team from two years ago. The third seed in the Western Conference, the Sacramento Kings. The Sacramento Kings two years ago won 46 games. They finished third in the West. And you know what their offense was ranked in the NBA in 2022-23? It was first. The greatest first, number offense one. in the history of the NBA. Best offense in the history of the NBA. Year. Darren Fox, Demontis Bonus, and the Sacramento Kings. Sorry, they won 48 games that year. 118.6 offensive rating. Same general team. They came back the next year. Not even close. They weren't even top 10. They were 13th in offense, worst offensive rating with similar personnel. It does happen. It is possible. Yep. I, you know, I, I can't rule it out, but I think Tyrese Halliburton's better. Than anyone the Kings. I hate to use the Kings as the example because it's Halliburton, but I think Halliburton's better than anyone on the Kings. So I don't think it'll be the same, but that did happen, right? That is a reasonable path that we've seen happen very recently. Yep. Teams caught up to what they were doing, and that is even a scary comp because – they were playing so fast and that's fast. how they were scoring yep. and that's what the Pacers were doing the first half of the year last year was you know the the famous running on made free throws <laughs> still they still should do that yeah and like Fox got hurt early in the year and they just never never hit that level again so it is possible I don't think it's very likely well this was fun uh hopefully you destroy this and get all the predictions almost exactly right again uh, where can people find you, your work, the things you have to say about the Indiana Pacers? Uh, people can find me on X at oh. Wilfer Ugh. NBA. Ugh. I have a, a five second bonus one for you if you have just the time. Oh, yeah. I, I would love a bonus one. I'm not going to kick uh, you out of here. Have you seen 2K yet? It just dropped today. I have seen the ratings. I have not seen the game. Ah, uh, it was going to be a ratings question, so I can't even do it. Dang it's going to give you the Pacers team rating. Oh, I don't know their team rating. I only know the players' ratings. Ah, so uh, over under ninety point five for the Pacers team. Is it is it pretty similar to team rate or to player ratings? How they do team ratings? Uh, I'm thinking back to past two. The last two K I played had Giannis on the cover. It was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I'd probably pick under. Right, they're probably like an eighty nine rated team, eighty eight. Pacers are a ninety two. Wow. Oh wow. They should be a fun 2K team. I was astonished until I went and looked at uh, all the other teams, and 2K has just massively inflated literally <laughs> every team's rating. <laughs> I think the Wizards were like an 88 or an 89. What? Yeah. <laughs> but make... I thought that question might get you tripped up a little. It did trip me up. <laughs> Dang, they've must. It's clearly inflated. I remember like the Western Conference All Stars were like a ninety-five, like the last time I played two K. Yes, inflation is not just coming for your pockets and grocery stores. Well, it is coming for your video games. It is coming. <laughs> it is unstoppable. The and election that's just November, virtual currency. The election in November is about two K ratings. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get this in check. <laughs> okay, now uh, where can people find you and your work about and your musings about the Pacers and the two K video game franchise? Yeah, find me on X at Will for NBA. I don't tweet in the off season, but uh, you'll you'll find me there this year as I <laughs> deal with one more year of Bally Sports, as, the, as you talked well, about. Well, we'll see you about that. But I I hmm, I don't know, but I think things look to be trending that way. We'll see. Uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about the rookies, Johnny Furphy, Tristan Newton, Enrique Freeman. Finally finished my deep dives on those guys, so. Do get to know more about them tomorrow, and then we'll see because I'll be gone in New Orleans, Louisiana for the next four days. So I'm not sure what the next episodes will look like. Thankfully, Will and I found the time to do this. Will, salute. Thank you very much. Next year we'll Thanks get back to me, for the third year in a row, and hopefully our lines that we fake set are once again very good. And I'll throw in a 2K rating one next year. Everybody, thank you for listening. See you very soon.